Get RF analysis power in the palm of your hands with our new full-featured real-time USB spectrum analyzer. Welcome back. This is Frederick from Technology. It's going to give you a short overview of this uh, signal hunting uh, software that is also released that you can, of course, pay for. I'm glad to assist you with any quotes. So, so it calls signal survey. So it's a combination of a signal library that we saw in the previous video and be able to map it versus the signals you have in the signal library to detect authorized, unauthorized or unknown signals. And also how you can use the smart antenna in the end with the new mapping software. So get, let's get started. So some tips and tricks first. When I do this, uh, some of the standards are really jump instead of just holding a, a max hold i go to dpx remove the spectrum go in here i actually remove bitmap and i go back to trace one go in here to ref level and put the map reference minus 30 go to the wheel here and change the step size to to 40 meg just to make sure that I have a little faster then we're around the 2.1 gig or something like that or 900 meg it doesn't really matter where we go and we start moving so now when i go up i go forth at a time so here we have some signals on screen and it looks really nice if you compare this to the normal spectrum screen this is what it would look like it's kind of different screen yeah so uh, yep yeah. anyway so so this is actually dpx running without the you know color coding so we're going to classify some regions. So here's one region we want to classify. So I go to the view, uh, signal survey toolbar and edit create. And you can save and export the settings you have here for the regions so of your daily maintenance, making sure that LTE doesn't disturb DVB-T, for example, it's easy to do that. So, so the trick is here to, to, to really aim. But as this is a YouTube video, I'll, I'll do my best to aim as good as I can. So I had added one region. And I add another one like here. They're just going to move it like this. Okay, so there's two regions added. Then we go up here, see if there's something else. There you know, doesn't seem to be much activity at all. I wouldn't expect that at this band. But up here there will be 2.1. There should be something here soon. Here's something, but that's really weak. I have a very, very bad antenna. Uh, here we see some VLAN, maybe we can put that in. And when you find it like this, I just use this just to, to get it in the center like this. It's not really necessary, but here. And I go to add region. And I go here and I just do like this. Okay. Done. Let's just see if we can find something else. We go up. Here's some more. Go and just click it in. Edit create. Oh, of course, it's disappeared again. I think this is some LTE signal. Oh, here it is. And then I add this region and I add this like this. Oh, nice. Done. And uh, let's see if there's anything else up here. Oh, here's something. And we add region. Add region. Add region, please. And I go like this. Okay, so that means that we have a couple of regions now. So, oh, this is good. So you can see down the signal survey, I can go back and forward to these three, two, one. So one, two, three, four, five. Five regions I have. And if I go to the span now, put it at two gig, you will see this span as kind of white. Two gig was, you know, maybe overshooting one gig or something. Oh, yeah, 500 megahertz. Good enough for this one. 500 meg. You can see that there's some white up here and I can click on the regions. If I go for select, I have the regions here and I have the regions here. I mean, nothing spectacular. This is it. But we put it back to 40 megahertz so we can do some survey. So we need to classify them. So we have created an area. Now we need to define them and we can start with the first one. And we go to region. What does my machine think this is it? He think it's like a GSM signal, but it's the star is not really filled in. And here it says LTE, so it's probably LTE. Uh, uh, and now you can see LTE band eight. Okay, sounds fair. We go to number two here, and this is LTE ten meg. It says, and what band? Oh, this is it. 
uh, not set. There's something wrong here. And I, I'm not the, the best user in the world either, so. And here, what, what's this? Mm. Isn't this like a 20 meg D? I think so from time to time. So there should be this standard. Uh, this I have no idea about. Uh, it seems to be kind of an LTE signal. Let me see, we go for the band first, LTE, and go for channel. That's probably an LTE 20 megahertz, let's see, yeah. About right, the channel is a little bit off, because I was not that good in the beginning. And then third one here, what could that be? Still band LTE 7, and it wants me to pick this one. So it gives you a reference, so this is the first one you can do. So now you can go back and see, you know, does it really make sense? Does it look the shape? Is the, the channel really, really a spot on, or should we go a little bit higher in frequency? And we put the LTE band oh, uh, uh, here, the LTE and the channel. But maybe there's LTE 374. I'm not an expert in this at all, so now that was the wrong way. So you can play a little bit with with these uh, things to get it, you know, really detail. But it, you know, correlates to see the green is, you know, the power envelope, how it should look like and how it looks like. Okay, so I think we're happy with this one. Uh, I think this is an permitted signal, and it's uh, let's say Telenor. Okay, and uh, we go to the next one. So we classify that one. Standard is this is unknown or unknown and comment check. And you can see, depending on what I do, it gives me new color codings here. I go to number three, this one. We classify this one. This is an authorized permitted signal and it's just VLAN. Okay, and the fourth one over here. Uh, we classify this one, it's uh, permitted, it's, uh, let's say, Telenor uplink. And the fifth one here, what is this? This is also, let's see, this is a classify as a completely unauthorized warning. Warning. So now you have a, a service summary of this one and the classifications, you've been out in the field and you see something and you can save it and you can navigate this to so easily check and also of course in a swept mode or in a 400 megahertz span you can see all these and as I said blue is okay this is blue, this is okay and this is okay so enjoy it and use it it's, it's really good to know when you're having issues, at least with interference with DVB-T and DVB. Uh, if we go a little bit shorter here, and of course, you know, one thing I do, I need to go, you know, just keep the bandwidth. So, uh, I hope you enjoyed this a little bit overview how I can use it. It's very simple. Uh, the next step is two other things that we have here, and I just go to preset, and we put to uh, 2.44 gigahertz. I have a signal. Usual VLAN is reliable. It, it's the antenna, so there is a support for antenna. It's support for smart antennas. So we have the support for Alaris, but I also have a simulator, and I can just show you how it works by pressing the configuring button, and it will give me some uh, some data here and connect. So, so I can change the azimuth, and I can change the role. I can change the you know. Uh, and I can do it dial, I can dial like this. So in the real uh, version then you would have a, a compass here that shows you the direction. Okay, let's continue with the Tektronix RSA mapping feature, which I think is good. It has some flaws, but you know, I'm from Tektronix, I cannot be like negative. But you know, the concept is really great. You have an RSA 306, you have a you know, GPS, it's, you have a, a direction finding antenna, and you have a map, and you can go around. So in this case, I want to show you a scenario where you no know, lady in Gothenburg complains there's, you know, the TV is really bad signals, we have to go out and find it. Let's make it simple. So in this case, I'm on my office, I don't have a GPS, I don't have a, 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 
an automatic uh, azimuth antenna. So <laughs> leave it me. So in this case, it, it is very simple. So if you had a GPS, you would be able to do repeated measurement, like a drive-by. So you could just drive around the block, you know, point the antenna a little bit to see if the signal is in, in, any interference. And we will walk. So you press this one, you have the flag up here and you press click. Here's the first measurement, hopefully soon. Here you go. And here's the second measurement. We go on and we go around this block just to see you know if she's right take some time to do this we walk around we walk we walk we walk and you can see that the azimuth is all the same okay and in the end the last measurement we will do is we will do a kind of uh, spect spectrogram measurement here in the middle this is what we do oh, that's what probably not the the best one <laughs> but anyway Okay, so when we've done this, I need to change the azimuth lines. So I click one here, and you can just draw a line like this. You see, ding, ding, and uh, let's see where this, uh, where the, where the error comes from. So I will just do it like this. And by the way, some people don't like this, but some people want to have lines which is longer, which is good, you know, because these lines on this software is a little bit short. I wish they were a little bit longer, but this is it. But you have the azimuth line style. So here you have a line style. And now we come in and we can zoom in. And let's assume that it's somewhere around here. We just zoom in. And someone at Ögontröstgatan in Gothenburg is giving us this interference. If you ever played with this, you're wondering how to zoom out again. Because you zoom in like this, you actually zoom out backwards. It's a little bit, uh, I think this is a one, a one of a kind solution. Not my favorite. Anyway, we go into the select one, and this is really good. So we have all these measurements saved, and I can just click one of them, and I can view it in the instrument. And here is the view in the instrument. So you can see the span, ref level, etc. And we can go back. Oh, we can go back. It was a little bit longer than I wanted. Go back here, and we can go to this one. We can view an instrument. Here you go. You see it really nice. And you can change label. This one is not, it should be not, nothing really recorded, some lines. And you can change uh, label. And you can change uh, uh, coffee break. Bra break or something. I don't know. Coffee. And then we go OK. So we have this uh, spectrogram coffee. Uh, and this is it for you to define disturbance. The good thing of setting the azimuth lines manually is that if you want to do it really, really quick and dirty, you can use the known landmarks as a reference. I did that a couple of times, and it actually works. Uh, and as you know, that you can also do this indoors. You don't need a GPS. This is the function of this. Does. So if you have problem with somebody's uh, putting up bugs or something in your meeting rooms, it's a, it's a very efficient way to you know, load, load the, the floor plan, go around and try to figure out what you did. Hope you enjoyed this. Um, next time I will uh, show you a video about our biggest and most uh, powerful RSA ever, the RSA 5000, the new one, updated.